This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we go back to Libya with Anjali Kamet as she spoke to migrants desperately trying to leave Libya. I'm standing at the port in Benghazi. Over the past two weeks, tens of thousands of foreign workers have been fleeing Libya from here. Today, the Greek cruise ship behind me is leaving for Syria. They're taking about 930 workers back home. But hundreds of workers still remain. My name is Kamal Moussa. I'm the coordinator for the evacuation of the foreign people who want to leave. But we have some, some nationals who are, that are stuck here, like Somalis, Bangladeshi, and people from Ethiopia, uh, Ghana. These people, are, it seems to me like nobody is stuck. Wants them or they, we are taking care of them, we're feeding them, we're giving them a roof, but for how long, I don't, I don't know. A few hundred of the people here are from the war torn countries of Somalia, Ethiopia, and Eritrea. They're terrified of staying in Libya after the spike in anti African violence in the past few weeks, but they can't go back to their homelands. My name is Zermia Stola, I'm from Ethiopia. We are under the shadow of poverty, and some people, they have political problem, so we are staying here. Describe the living situation here, and how many people are here? I think there are uh, maybe 300 people, all of them. 340. Yeah, 340 people. We are living here. Uh, for myself, I have seven days here. So that's uh, so sometimes the Libyan person, they talk us, it's just the last, the last day today. If, if somebody is not solve our problems, they tell us to go outside. So we are so afraid. While hundreds of foreign workers remain at the port waiting for an opportunity to leave, many thousands more are stuck at Libya's border crossings into Egypt and Tunisia. We spoke to a group of fleeing migrants at the Saloum crossing between Egypt and Libya. My name is Adu Alex Menu. I come from Ghana. I was working and the crisis came in. So we have to run for our lives. Urgently, we have to leave for Libya to Egypt to find our way to our various countries. My name is Asante Jani from Ghana. Can I ask you, did you have any problems in Libya before this? Uh, not at all. I have no problem. Only this crisis. We hear a lot of stories in the media about the mercenaries that Gaddafi used, and some people say they were sub-Saharan Africans. What danger did you feel you were in? You're not Libyan. What was your, what was your greatest fear? The heat blast now. So when you, when you go to town to buy something like food, you take taxi in and out. If not, if you make a tent to walk in town, um, I'm going to say you'll be killed. They shoot my, my very best friend. We were three. They shoot one. I left all my things there. Right now, as I'm sitting here, we one guy, no, no, one guy from Cameroon. He's a Rasta man. He got, got dread loss. They killed him. So how soon do you expect to leave here? Even right now, I'll be much appreciated to uh, quit from this place from this hell. Human Rights Watch has been here in Libya tracking the situation of migrant workers and suspected mercenaries. We spoke to Peter Bukhart, he's the emergencies director at Human Rights Watch. I think the whole story of the African mercenaries in Libya should be a case study for journalism schools all across the United States um, because it's a prime example of irresponsible reporting and just lazy reporting. You know, rather than going out and investigating these incidents and whether they're true, these rumors, um, Western journalists from very reputable um, publications just published the rumors as true. And they talked about African men running wild, raping women, and all of these things, which is just about as racist a myth as you can get. Can you say a little bit about who the mercenaries actually are? Certainly it's possible that Gaddafi used African mercenaries because Gaddafi has been involved in training and financing and arming rebel groups around Africa. Um, he's been very involved in the Chadian civil war and he's been involved in the conflict in Darfur where he's been financing some rebel factions just to have a role around the negotiation table. Um, so he does have the capacity not to go recruit African mercenaries, but to use the 
the groups that he's already training and financing. Um, and it's possible that some of those fighters have been mobilized around Tripoli or even in, in the East. Um, but before we jump to that conclusion, we should investigate. And for the moment, all of the cases we have investigated in the East, um, these allegations have turned out not to be true. We asked a representative of the Libyan revolutionaries if they're doing anything to stem this tide of populist rage against anyone perceived to be from sub-Saharan Africa. In the beginning of the revolution, the first couple of days of the revolution, you understand uh, the level of rage uh, within the people was very high, and we worked very hard to safeguard those African workers and protected them from being attacked in any way. We put them in safe places where now things have calmed down and I don't think there is any threat. I am Amal Bugaygis. No one is killing anybody from these people. The people are organized now and they understand and they bring these people to the court. And in the court, they investigate these people and they are doing their business. Some people, we are not sure if we are this, this way or this way. Also, they are here. But when we are sure somebody is only so innocent, very least immediately. I'm not going to say we're satisfied with some of their actions. I mean, we do feel that they continue to detain a lot of people who are clearly innocent and who should be released. Um, but at least they have allowed us access. Um, and I do think that they're sincere in trying to resolve um, some of these issues because a lot of the people involved in this revolution um, are human rights activists, they're lawyers, and they're people who themselves were imprisoned at some stage. Um, so um, they are they recognize the importance of respecting human rights and they, this revolution is very much about changing that culture of abuse and repression. What's the number of migrant workers in Libya? If you count up all of the non-Libyans working in Libya, you're probably talking in the very high hundreds of thousands and probably the millions. There's hundreds of thousands of Africans who come here um, to work in menial labor. And then there's many Asians who come to work in the service industries. This really, like many countries in the Middle East, is a country where most of the labor is performed by migrant laborers. Back at the Egyptian border, we met a large group of migrant workers from Bangladesh who have spent several nights at the crossing waiting to be evacuated by their government. Yes, my name is Mohamed Suhel, my country Bangladesh. How many days are Bangladeshis been here for? Mm, maybe maybe, maybe uh, 10 days. You've been waiting at the Egyptian border for 10 days? 10 days, 10 days. The Egyptian border is coming 10 days. How many Bangladeshis are here? Uh, 3,000 Bangladesh have now people. And you come, are you coming, which city in Libya are you coming from? Uh, I'm coming from Benghazi, uh, boosted company, Singapore. What, what do you do? What does the company do? Uh, company construction work. We've seen very little response from the Bangladeshi government. And it's really a question of resources um, for some of these countries. Um, China is now a relatively wealthy country and can organize. They can lease a Greek cruise ship to come here and take away tens of thousands of workers. It's much more different, difficult for the Bangladeshi government. The international community has an obligation to help evacuate the Bangladeshis as well as the Africans. And it's a real tragedy that the Africans, who are the most vulnerable in Libya right now, who are literally being chased in the street, who have in some cases been lynched and killed, um, and who have really gone through a very tragic experience, are the ones left on the dock day after day after day, so desperate that they're trying to jump onto ships as they leave the harbor and they get pulled off and beaten. Despite the horrific circumstances of their exodus from Libya, some of the fleeing workers from Ghana did express their empathy with the broader struggle of the Libyan revolutionaries. Okay, what I know is uh, everybody likes freedom. So in this world, democracy is the best rule in, in this, this, our, this world, in this world. So as they started uh, this, uh, I was not even, I was not annoyed on it because in, in my country Ghana we are I'm from democratic country. 
in our uh, in our country we don't have money because of money that we came to Libya we don't have money so if they receive democracy and this country will be free we will be happy for democracy now I'm Anjali Khamet with Yusuf Mistak in Benghazi Libya